sick is that? Who doesn't want to learn that? Yeah, I thought so. I'll see you on the other side. Now in the comment section on the Bohemian Rhapsody solo lesson, you guys said that you liked the fact that I ran through some scale shapes before we got started, so we're going to do the same thing again today. He's mainly in G pentatonic minor, but he has a few moments where he nips into the pentatonic major scale. So I'm going to run you through a couple of those shapes. Here's the G pentatonic minor scale we're going to use. Obviously you can practice that the octave above as well because we are going to make our way up there. Personally for me, I don't use the pinky as much when I'm up high because it's a lot more crowded, frets are smaller, but you do what's comfortable for you. Here's the G pentatonic major um, scale shape that we're gonna use. It's kind of like three notes per string two, three notes per string two. It's a nice shape. As always, I'm going to break this down into manageable sections for you. So here's the first part we're going to learn slow. We start the solo with a whole tone bend on the fifth fret of the G string with the third finger, and it's played as a pinched harmonic. Now, if you don't know what a pinched harmonic is, you've probably heard it. It's where the note squeals way higher in pitch than what you're actually fretting. And the technique to achieve that Best described as kind of choking down on the pick so you're not showing as much of it. Really dig into the string as you play the note and then let the string brush against the skin, the side of the thumb, to create that squealing pinched harmonic sound. Now, you'll have to practice moving up and down the string to find the exact right point for the pinched harmonic you want. And at that point, you're going to annoy everybody you know, but it'll be worth it. So we bend the fifth fret of the G up and down, pull off to the third fret with the index, and then go down to the fifth fret of the D with the third finger. You can give that um, a bit of vibrato, pinched harmonic if you want. The whole kind of opening uh, section here has got pinched harmonics throughout it, which makes it sound really badass. So because we're in G, I like to make use of the open G string and I use it here as like a little passing note to help hand position move sooner. So hit the open G and then hit the third fret of the D with the pinky and then grab the third fret of the A string with the third finger. You're going to pull it down uh, a semitone to the blues note, the flat five, then play the three by itself and then come back to the index. A little bit of palm muting if you want here to kind of chunk up the bottom end. And then we're going to resolve by sliding into the note D, fifth fret of the A string. Give that some vibrato. And because this pinched harmonics throughout this opening section, I feel like he's using lots of kind of heavy downstrokes. Here's the next little run. So it's a really fast lick, totally badass, and it kind of whips through that pentatonic major shape I was showing you before. Start by sliding into the seventh fret of the A, and then we've got hammer on pull off from the fifth fret of the D to the seven. Come down to the E again on the seventh fret of the A. Now, it sounds like he kind of just not fumbles, but like kind of 
just wants more of a percussive note in the middle. So I've just gone for hitting the open D for a second and then the uh, G on the fifth fret of the D. So and when you speed that up, you can maybe palm mute the D and you just get this kind of like percussive chunk to use that word again. Hope that makes sense to you. It feels wrong if you don't put that in there. And uh, it's more logical for me to use the open D than uh, this fretted D on the fifth fret um, because it's awkward to hop over and then give this G note vibrato. I find anyway. Moving further up the scale and carrying on that same kind of technique, you're going to slide to the ninth fret of the D with the third finger. Then we're going to pick the seven on the G. Then I want you to pull off the nine on the G back to the seven and then make your way down to the nine on the D with the third. Immediately come back up to the G string and hammer on seven to nine. And then you're going to put your index finger on the eighth fret of the B and then pick the tenth fret with the third finger. Up a whole step, down, and then back up a whole step again. You don't pick it again, you just bend it up, down, back up. When I said this lick kind of whips through the pentatonic major scale, it's because it's very quick. We slide in, this hammer-ons, this pull-offs, it cascades down, goes back up. Um, and once you get that speed and technique, it's really cool. After you've bent the B string up and down twice, you're going to put the pinky on the 10th fret of the high E, play both strings at the same time, but just bend the B again. Hit the high E, 10th fret by itself, and then let that B string down. And we're going to pick the 8th fret of the B three times. Altogether, this middle section slow goes like this. Now we've got this really cool lick. Start by bending the 10th fret of the high E up a whole step, third finger. Mute it when it's at the top with the right hand, let it down and swap to the pinky. You're going to fret that 10 again, and then bend the 10th fret of the B up with the third finger, and then hit the 8. The finger swap allows you to get that really kind of snappy staccato swap. We then hit the 10th fret of the B, with the pinky, there's a little pinched harmonic in there if you want that. And then we're going to play the ninth fret of the G, bend it up a whole step and really milk it for everything it's got. Okay. Then you're going to play 8, 10 on the B, index third. Pick them both and bend the ninth fret of the G with the second finger up. Whole step. You might want to support it with the index there. Finishing on the seventh fret of the G string with the index, some vibrato. Here's the last part of the solo. So we start with this really dramatic slide up to the 17th fret of the B string with the third finger and then go immediately into a bend. Let that down, pre-bend release, and then hit the 15 index. Then you do the exact same thing again on the G string, it's just a lot closer together. So bend up, pre-bend release, back to the 15. 
And then you've got this nice little triangle where we go 17 on the G, then the D, 15 on the G, and then back to the 17 on the D. I then slide into the 15th fret of the B string. And then we've got this really cool little pattern. And what's happening there is we are pulling off the 18th fret of the B with the second finger, back to the 15, fretting the 17 on the G. You can do that twice in a row. You can make your own mind up with the picking. Here I like to go up, down, up, down, because I'm just picking the way I'm moving. You can loop that around for practice. Uh, you only do it twice in the song, and then you bend the 18 up a whole step. And then we've got this. Start on the 15th fret of the B, index finger. I'm gonna bend the 17 on the G up, down, pull off to the 15. Then hit the 17 again on the same string, pull off again. Pull off the 17 on the D to the 15, and then hit the 17 on the A. Give it some vibrato or you can use your bar if you've got one. Here it is one last time, a little bit slower, just for your reference. I know he's not dead yet, but I think the spirit of Neil Shun just came out of the uh, back of the PRS and tried to like possess me or something. Very strange. Now, speaking of strange, if you want to come hang out with me in between these videos, consider checking out my Patreon, where you get access to tabs, backing tracks, guitar profiles, all for as little as five quid a month. Or you can just support the channel for three quid. Three quid! What does three quid get you nowadays? Who knows? I hope you enjoyed learning the solo with me today anyway. It's an absolute ripper. Neil Schoen is an um, incredible guitarist, super melodic. Um, he just writes the coolest things. Those who play, no. Um, history of playing Gibson and PRS. So I thought, whilst I've got the PRS out, let's do something by Neil. I've done a Journey cover before, but never a lesson. I think I got it pretty close. If not, as you know, I don't care. Anyway, that reminds me, I got something for you.